views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Good evening, I am Errol Schneer, Bronx Lebanon Hospital Center's Vice President of Planning, Marketing, and Public Relations, your co-host for tonight's Health Beat television program. We welcome you, our many viewers, to Bronx Lebanon's Health Beat, and as always, encourage you to continue participating in the program by calling 718-960-7261 with any questions you may have. That's 718-960-7261. And we promise to do our very best to keep you medically informed and healthy by discussing the topics that are of interest to you. Please tune in every Monday evening from 6.30 to 7 p.m. on Channel 67. And you can also find out more information about Bronx Lebanon and its many community services online at our website, bronxcare.org. Tonight, my co-host, <coughs> Dr. Milton Gums. Bronx Lebanon's Vice President and Medical Director and I will be discussing the identification and treatment of eye problems, certainly a most important issue to all of us. And joining us this evening to provide our viewers with a clear vision is Dr. Jing Gray Wang. Wang. Dr. Wang is an attending physician in the Department of Ophthalmology at Bronx Lebanon Hospital Center. She has extensive specialty experience in the ophthalmology field and has also published numerous articles and lectured throughout the world. Dr. Wang, welcome. Thank you. Now, Dr. Wang, before we hear from you, let me once again encourage you, our viewers, to call in with any questions or comments you may have. The number to call is 718-960-7261. <coughs> That's 718-960-7261. And please call us. Now, Dr. Wang, we're going to start the program by asking you to simply provide our viewers with an overview of the types of eye problems that you yourself treat, both from a uh, simple perspective as well as a much more complex one. And I'm sure you do a little bit of both and probably a lot in the middle as well. Sure. I treat various eye disease from as simple as needing eyeglasses right. and right eyes. Um, to more complex situation like inflammation in the eye, uveitis, to cataract, glaucoma. Okay. Well, before you get into more details regarding the many types of eye problems and diseases that are encountered daily, can you tell me, sure about the recommendations for eye examinations when you have children and adults seeing you? In general, we recommend regular eye exam. So the first exam would be comprehensive. That mm -hmm. will include the dilated eye exam. Mm -hmm. And the frequency for the following exam depends on what eye condition you have. So in general, once a year will be a rough average. Okay. Okay, now you, going back to the first question I had asked you, do you do surgery as well in terms of treating uh, yes, patients with eye conditions? And what yeah. types of surgery might you perform? I do cataract surgery and cornea surgery, like pterygium surgery and glaucoma surgeries. So some of the surgery I imagine can be highly complex. Yes. Okay, let okay. me interrupt again. Okay. Um, let's now focus a little on the increased operations in elderly patients. For example, what about glaucoma? Do you see any of glau any glaucoma? Can you explain for our viewers what it is? as well as identify the symptoms and causes. Do you see any glaucoma? Yes. Okay. I'm, glauco I'm specialist trained in glaucoma. Okay, so act it. <laughs> <laughs> so glaucoma is an eye disease that damages the optic nerve. And it's usually caused by the fluid accumulate in the front part of the eye. This extra fluid causes increased eye pressure and damaging the nerve. So glaucoma is a leading cause of blindness in the people over age of 60. And it's important to differentiate what type of glaucoma people have. Yeah. So they are open angle glaucoma and close angle glaucoma. Yeah. So they are treated differently. Do children have glaucoma at any time? 
Yes, they do. They can have congenital glaucoma and juvenile glaucoma. Yeah. yeah. What is that? And you address that also, right? I do. Um, so they usually treat it surgically. They would treat by um, doing, it's called goniotomy surgery. I don't know what that and means. And also, um, they can be treated with eye drops as right. well. Yeah. Now, who is most at risk for glaucoma? And uh, when you treat it, how successful are you in uh, curing it, for example, or even monitoring it or controlling it? Everyone's at risk for glaucoma. Some people are higher risk than average. Those include people who are over age of 40, has family history of glaucoma, and are Hispanic or African heritage, heritage yeah. and people who have high eye pressure, they have diabetes, nearsighted or um, farsighted. Those are yeah. higher risk for glaucoma. And what type of testing do you do to uh, determine if someone has glaucoma? Or how would they know the warning signs? So the warning signs for open angle glaucoma, they usually have no signs. Really? And in so the early stage, yes. They call it a silent thief of sight yeah. because they don't feel any pain. Yeah. And um, with the disease progress, they can kill the peripheral vision, the sight vision. And for angle closure glaucoma, when the attack happens, they can have severe eye pain, decreased vision, redness in the eye, they see halo or rainbows, and they may have a vomiting or a nausea. Yeah. And so they are treated very differently, mm. depends on the type of glaucoma and the stage of their glaucoma. Yeah. So pretty much it's essential that glaucoma get treated at a very early stage. Yes. To diagnosis, the diagnosis takes comprehensive eye exam. So we'll do uh, check the vision, check the eye pressure, and look at the angle of the structure of the eye, and do dilated eye exam, and look at the nerves. And we also do some testing to check the peripheral vision, and take a picture of the nerve, and also um, right. we'll do uh, a serial testing to yeah. determine the pressure. Well, I'm going to ask you again, because this is an interesting and difficult problem. Yeah. How would someone know they're beginning beginning to have disruption of their eye through glaucoma? How, you know? Most of people, they don't know until yeah. they have eye exam. Mm -hmm. And but people you tell them if you the have... Eye exam. Yeah. So usually the, earth, the sign some people may see is they have tunnel vision, but they don't see the sight. They notice that they're missing something, and yeah. they bump into stuff on really? the side. And so they start tripped on the object on the floor. And because you're losing the peripheral vision, vision. Okay. they well, don't, that's, that's, that's a safety issue. Yeah. How often is surgery necessary to treat glaucoma? And can it be addressed without surgery? The, usually the first line treatment is medication and laser. So for mild to moderate glaucoma. So medication often is eye drops. Mm -hmm. And the laser can be uh, used <coughs> as well to treat the cells at the, ang to, at the angle or to open up the angle if the angle is closed. Mm -hmm. So sur surgery usually reserved for more advanced glaucoma. Right, and you at Bronx Lebanon and your staff also perform that as well. Yes, we do. Yeah, she, okay. said it again. she said it already, but maybe you can ask her again. About right. the, the types of, the, um, the most common causes of glaucoma. The common yeah. causes, yes, so that is an important, maybe you can repeat that for our yeah, viewers. Yeah. Sure, the common and cause of glaucoma, um, so we can go back to a little bit basics. So the eye has fluid constantly made in the right. eye. Right. And so they drain out the eye from the structure called angle. So right. when there's the same amount of fluid being made and drained out, the pressure kept steady. Right. But if the drainage angle got compromised, so they can cause the pressure goes right. up and Beautiful. damage the right. nerve. You gave me a difficult question to ask you. <laughs> Are there any genetic factors or even ethnicity that can increase the risk of glaucoma and what if any preventative measures can be taken for this high risk disease you said some of it already but you can talk about the ethnicity and so forth sure glaucoma is a multifactorial disease mm -hmm. and there's some genes has been associated with glaucoma but usually genetic study is not widely used for diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And um, ethnicity, um, African and Hispanic are higher risk for really? getting glaucoma. Right. 
Now, another eye problem, moving away from glaucoma to another area that uh, you had indicated that you uh, treat, is cataracts. What are they and how are they treated? And sure. how common of a problem is it? Cataract is a very common condition. As long as people after the age of 50, often the cataract start growing. So cataract is cloudiness of the lens in the eye that causing blurry vision. They usually will not cause pain or any irritation. So people will describe seeing things like film over their eye right. and they kept changing glasses, but nothing helps. And so, so it's a like very you. common okay. condition. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to a question that I wanted to ask you before because it comes up quite frequently when we talk about eye problems and eye care. What is the difference between an ophthalmologist such as yourself, an optometrist, and an optician. Perhaps you can share that with our viewers because there's always creates some confusion in when they should see each of these respective specialties. Sure, we all work together to treat um, right. people's eye disease. So ophthalmologists are trained both medically and surgically. So if you have eye condition that requires surgery, right. you should go to see ophthalmologist. Optometrists, they are very well trained to treat medical conditions as well. Right. Optation is to help you with glasses. Got it. Okay. Okay, on that note, let's pause for a short break, Dr. Wang, and when we return, we will continue our discussion, as well as once again take calls from you, our viewers. The number to call is 718-960-7261. That's 718-960-7261, and please call us. At Bronx Lebanon's Women's Health Center, its labor and delivery unit, and Center for Gynecological Care, services are provided in a welcoming environment. Women in the Bronx can always depend on our OBGYN team for expert, compassionate, and highly specialized care. We deliver the best in women's health services. And high-risk pregnancies can also result in the delivery of premature infants, Thanks to Bronx Lebanon's neonatal intensive care unit, these babies are winning their battles for life. We have saved thousands of babies throughout the years. There is nothing more satisfying than knowing that because of our care and attention, they can live their lives to the fullest as healthy young adults. For women with gynecological problems, robotic as well as other surgical procedures and treatments are available. I can tell you that the sophisticated surgical procedures that can be accomplished with the robot offer women in the community the benefit of smaller incisions and a shorter length of stay. Bronx Lebanon is also taking women to heart in treating cardiovascular disease, one of the leading causes of death in women. In our cardiology areas, we evaluate our female patients to assess their risk factors for heart disease, including high blood pressure and cholesterol. Winning the battle against breast cancer represents another crucial challenge. At our Breast Cancer Center, we've implemented a comprehensive approach that involves exam, imaging, and biopsy, which is clearly succeeding in the detection of early cancer. When illness occurs, Bronx Lebanon's nurses are providing excellent and compassionate care. In the ER, we see some of the most dramatic examples of the Bronx Lebanon team in action. A high percentage of the patients seen in the emergency department are women, and we are sensitive to their needs. But what is also important is that our ER is helping patients overcome all types of emergency situations. Diabetes is another problem that impacts many women, and Bronx Lebanon is taking an essential leadership role in controlling this disease. We are empowering our patients and the community to recognize the symptoms of diabetes, seek help, and improve their quality of life. And keeping its female and male patients moving in the right direction is Bronx Lebanon's Department of Orthopedics. Positive results are also being achieved for women wanting to improve their appearance. Our board-certified dermatologists are experts in treating skin conditions and helping women look their very best. And with the completion of its Health and Wellness Center for Ambulatory Care, Life Recovery Center for Chemical Dependency, Bronx Lebanon is positioned for continued success. Welcome back to HealthBeat. We come to you live on BronxNet every Monday evening from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Please call us at 718-960-7261 with any questions you may have, and we will certainly do our best to answer them. That's 718-960-7261. Now, before we continue the discussion, Dr. Wang, we do have a call from one of our viewers. 
I believe it's David. You're on the air, David. No, we lost him. David? Lost? You coming back? You gone. Yeah, he hung up, yeah. That's, yeah okay, that's, yeah. we lost David. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to you, Dr. Wang. We often ask our panelists to share their respective backgrounds with our viewers, and I'm sure you have an interesting uh, story to tell our viewers in terms of uh, A, your education, and B, what interested you in becoming an ophthalmologist? Sure. I was born and raised in China. I came to the States after the college for right. graduate study and medical study. So I got a PhD in biomedical sciences from the University right. of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. Right. And I got medical training from Des Moines University in Iowa. So after that, I came to the New York Bronx Lebanon Hospital right. for my residency training in ophthalmology. Right. So ophthalmology is study of eye disease. I choose this field because its ability to have a huge impact on people's life. And also, I really enjoy doing eye surgeries, especially cataract and glaucoma surgeries. Right. So after my residency training, I went to Boston for one year of fellowship training in glaucoma. And um, the people in Bronx and Bronx Lebanon Hospital taught me to become an eye doctor. I love this community so much, I came back as attending to practice right. in Bronx Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So you would say that this is a very exact science, ophthalmology, so you have to be totally precise. Is that a correct thing to say? Just one yeah. minute. And David don't is answer, on the phone. Don't answer. David is here. David, do you have a question for Dr. Wang? David? Hello. Do you have a question for this good doctor? Yes, I do, Dr. Gums. Thank you very much for taking the call. Um, years ago, years ago, I was a professional boxer, and I just wonder how trauma to my face and head uh, would affect my vision and uh, as I'm getting older. You heard that question, right? Uh, yes. So, David, Give him a break. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So the trauma to the head and your face sometimes can have indirect impact to your eye. So they can cause some damage to the nerve of your eye. And so it's very important for you to have a baseline eye exam before. If you haven't had one, I would recommend you to have eye exam soon to, to have a comprehensive eye exam. What does that involve for David? And look at the camera for him. So David, to do a comprehensive exam, you will um, come to the eye clinic and we do check your vision, check the pressure of your eye, check the angle structures of your eye, and we also dilate your eye and to do an exam under the microscope. Yeah. So it will take roughly an hour to an hour and a half for the whole exam. But if it's necessary, we may do some testing to take pictures of the nerve and to do some other testing if it needed. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. You want to ask about the surgical questions, Okay, Dr. well, so a lot of it is going to be done already. Um, I'm a little anxious to know what you do other than the glaucoma. What sort of other operations do you do as an ophthalmologist? So I also do cataract surgery and some cornea surgery, Which, like a pterygium. What about cataract and the other one? Cornea. The cornea, cornea. surgery. Yeah, what about the... Results. So those are more immediate gratification for me. Yeah. So cataract is to surgery is to take out the clouding right, yeah. lens and put an artificial lens in the eye. A lot of time people see much better the second day, even yeah. the second day after mm -hmm. surgery. Yeah. Right. And the cornea, the pterygium surgery is to remove the actual growth on the cornea yeah. and people will see We're going to interrupt you a second. We have yeah. another call from Madeline. Yeah. Go ahead, Madeline. Hello, yes. Hello, hello Madeline. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay. To the, doc to the doctor, um, I wanted to ask her, when you get diagnosed with glaucoma, what are the treatments and what happens if the treatments don't work? That's a very good question, Madeline. So the question is, what are the treatments for glaucoma and what if one doesn't work? So typically, the glaucoma treatments start with medication, so including eye drops. So the eye drops has many different classes. So far, we usually start treating. 
Yeah, we lost. You can keep going. Okay. Yeah. So there are many different classes of uh, medications, and so we use combination of different class to maximize the treatment option. And we also can do laser treatment to target on the cells in the um, drainage system, and we can also do surgery if everything fails. Okay. Yeah. Now on uh, the subject of teenagers, what types of eye problems do they present? I imagine there's some eye accidents here and there, and other not here and there, but I imagine that's an issue. What are some of the other problems uh, besides trauma to the eye? Most common would be needing glasses, nearsighted or farsighted. Right. And we have been treating other conditions like glaucoma in the, in the kids, right. and also inflammation in the eye. Right. And sometimes the other medical conditions can cause eye problem as well. Right. Okay. Okay. How does diabetes impact the vision? And how do you work with the other medical di dis disciplines to address and treat the potential problems that are associated with that? Sure. Diabetes can affect many different parts of the eye. Mm -hmm. So it can affect the nerve and can cause... Now we have another call, Dr. Yeah, okay. Lisa, do you have a question for us? Yes. My question is, um, when are contact lenses recommended over glasses? You heard the question, right? Okay. So the question is, when contact lens recommended over glasses? Usually, contact lens is for more convenience or cosmetic reason, yeah. unless there's medical condition, such as keratoconus, that needs medical needs for mm -hmm. contact lens. Right. Okay. Okay, thank All you right. so thank much. Thank you very happy. much. You continue your yeah. question. Uh, the issue of diabetes, you hadn't finished it that Dr. Gums had asked. Perhaps you can finish it, and then I wanted to ask you one more question before we run out of time. Sure. Diabetes can cause more um, progression of cataract, right. and the other important issue is diabetic retinopathy. So that's why diabetic pe uh, patient was recommended to have eye exam at least once a year. Right. Okay, now a question I, uh, I really wanted to ask you is some of your success stories. I mean, people have been yeah. calling up tonight. What are some of the uh, successes that you can share? I'm sure you've had many dramatic uh, patient successes. Can you share one or two of them sure. with our viewers? Yeah. Yep. Um, a few years ago, I had one patient has both eyes, very, very dense cataract. Barely she could see anything. And we did cataract the first eye. And the second day, when we opened the gauze, and she could see me clearly, and she gave me a big hug and kiss. Mm -hmm. That really motivated me for so many years, and I mm -hmm. always remember. And it's such important to give people clear vision to have them enjoy the life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the second? There's another patient um, I just treated recently with surgery. He came in with blind, almost blind in one eye and very painful. He has a high pressure of 40s, which is almost four times the regular pressure. And so we did, we had to do a glaucoma surgery mm -hmm. and his pressure is under control after surgery. Mm -hmm. And the pain is gone. Yeah. Very good. We often see or hear advertisements related to um, LASIK treatment. Is this recommended universally? What are the results? LASIK treatment is recommended for the right patient. So usually you can do a, a you need a complete evaluation. Not right. everyone is a good candidate for LASIK treatment. Well, who are the good candidates? Yeah, that's a good question. The good candidates are the ones that doesn't have cornea condition and that will you know, uh, in, impact the result of the uh, the uh, compromise the result of the surgery, right. and also who doesn't have other reason that causing decreased vision, yeah. right. like the cataract or retina yeah. Yeah. disease. So it's important to do. Some patients have a lot of symptomatology afterwards, a lot of burning in their eyes, right? They can have dry eyes yeah. after the LASIK surgery. Yeah. Yes. I've been calling my friends right. from even from Europe about that problem. It's a Another problem. question, talking about advertisements that we uh, we constantly hear about, is the eye whiteners or the eye drops to uh, uh, relieve eye pain or eye soreness that you can get over the counter. What do you uh, say to that? Is that a good thing to do? Does it can it hurt you? 
I would re recommend to get your eye checked before you start using any over-the-counter eye drops because there could be many reasons to cause red eyes and some of them can be blinding disease. So it's important to know first what's your diagnosis. If it's as simple as dry eyes, you can treat with over-the-counter the right. artificial tears. Right. But if some other reason, then they would need different treatment. Right, okay. And I know Dr. Gums wanted to ask you this question, but I'll steal it from you. What advances do you see occurring in your field? I'm sure there are all kinds of things happening. You mentioned laser for one. That's a very exciting field, glaucoma very rapidly evolving. And right now we have new drug delivery system. People can put the drug in the punctal system or inside of the eye to avoid everyday use of the eye drops. And also the surgery has painful? been evolved. It's a procedure, it's very yeah. quick, and that can last for a month to three months. And um, it's, used, it's good for people who have difficulty putting in eye drops on a regular basis. Um, okay, Dr. Wang, yeah. let me thank you. We've come to the end of the yeah. program. Yeah. Let me thank you for joining with Dr. Gums and myself on tonight's Healthy Television me. program. And most importantly, let me thank you, our viewers, for tuning in this evening. If our viewers have any questions or need assistance, I encourage you to call our Physician Referral Service by dialing 718-99-BRONX. That is 718-99-BRONX. That is... Or you can refer oh, to our website. Yeah, or you can refer to our website. <laughs> at bronxcare.org. Yeah, yeah. Good night. We cannot be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe. And disrupt the situation. We can. Get someone the cab. Or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends. Our roommates. Our, our classmates, classmates. Our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We, we can. can. Intervene. It's on us. All of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org.